I have great admiration for the oyster. And why? Because of its magical process of creating a pearl. It all starts with an irritant, a grain of sand, for example. And that irritant serves as a catalyst to begin the formation of these luminous layers, one on top of another, until the pearl is formed. Now you may be wondering, what does the oyster process have to do with the Haftorah that we read on the first day of Rosh Hashanah? Stay tuned. On the first day of Rosh Hashanah, the Haftorah comes from the first book of Samuel and begins with the chapter one. And it's the story of two wives, Hannah and Penina, and their husband, Elkanah. And it's a archetypal trio, for one wife is fertile and has many children, and the other wife is barren and yearns to have a child. One wife is deeply loved by the husband, Elkanah. The other one, respected but not so loved. Which wife is the barren? Hannah. Which one is deeply loved? Hannah. Now, Penina is mentioned several times in that first chapter until verse 6. And in that one sentence, it gives you more details about Penina and her behavior. And I've always felt that it, Penina got a bad rap. It says in line six, Penina vexed Hannah sore to make her fret. And Hannah wept bitterly because of those taunts. And every year I felt upset. I felt puzzled. I felt, Penina, where is her empathy for this other woman, for this other person? How insensitive she is. How could I grow up to become Penina if that's my role model? And then I decided to look into the Midrashim to find out more about the relationship between Penina and Hannah. Are they rivals, as it says in that Haftorah? But what I found and I want you to understand, this is the story where Panina is an amazing friend to Hannah. And Panina is the hero of this story. The Torah is written in shorthand. And there are a lot of spaces between words. Well, those wise rabbi created a midrashic process of interpretation to bring questions to the text and to find out what would clarify the text or expand the text or explain the text more deeply or perhaps even to resolve uh, what seemed like a contradiction in the text. And these midrashim, these creative stories, filled in the spaces between words. So I looked into the Midrashim, and I was startled by what I saw, what I read. Penina says to Hannah, Hannah, do you have a scarf for your older son and an undergarment for your younger son? What sons? Hannah has no children. Hannah, you better rouse yourself and wash the faces of your children so they'll be fit to go to school. Hannah is barren. Again, I thought, Penina, why don't you have more compassion for Hannah? But then I asked the key question that I had not asked. I asked, why does Panina speak like this with Hannah and to Hannah? And why does she vex her sore to make her fret? 
and I searched through more midrashim, and I found the answer. God speaks to Penina and instructs her. Penina, vex Hannah sore to make her fret. But I looked at that English word fret, and it didn't seem so strong. So I went to the Hebrew, and the word that was there in the Hebrew is ra'am, to make her thunder. God instructed Penina to vex Hannah sore, to make her thunder. For all thunders are also followed by rain. Rain, water, tears, symbolic of the source of life. And the Holy One says to Penina, make Hannah thunder against me in prayer on her own behalf. And I promise I will Remember her at once. There it is. And so Penina was pushing Hannah to the edge by vexing her sore and making her thunder. And Hannah ran to the temple and she sat there with tears flowing down her face like a waterfall. And she was praying, her lips were moving, but no sound came from her. It was a soundless prayer. And as you may remember, Eli the priest thought that Hannah was a drunken woman. But Hannah was sitting there with that soundless prayer coming from the depth of her being, from her kishkes with kavanah and deep tears. And that is the prayer that God heard. And God opened her womb. And soon after, Hannah was with child. And in its right time, Hannah gave birth to her son, Samuel. Hannah became fruitful due to the creative catalytic force of Penina. So now let's go back to the oyster. It says in Proverbs 6, line 6, that you can learn a great deal from the little insect, the ant. And we know we can learn from everyone and everything, every animal. I learned a valuable lesson from the oyster. I learned that it was an irritant that serves as the catalyst in creating a pearl. Now, who is the irritant in this story? Penina. And Penina served as the catalyst to fulfill her role as Penina. I looked years ago, of course, what Penina means. It's the Hebrew name that means pearl. And there I had a positive role model, Penina. A role model because of her strength and her creativity and her fertility and her practicality and earthiness and because of her love of God and her faith in God and her trust in God. And so every year since then, when I look and follow the reading of the Haftorah on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, the story of Hannah and Penina and their husband Elkanah, I come to that line six and I read, Penina vexed Hannah sore to make her thunder. And I tell myself the rest of that story. And I smile.